What are the best processors out there? Is Ryzen 7000 better than Intel's 13th generation? And why does AMD continue to crush Intel in sales? With the release of the Ryzen 7000 we have seen the market share of AMD CPUs continue to steadily climb. Recall that AMD was broken just before the release of the Ryzen processors. From that 2017 to today, the situation seems to have turned around with AMD having a super powerful position now, despite being a much smaller company than Intel. If you've made it to this video, you're possibly thinking about buying a new computer for gaming, streaming, or work. For this reason, today I bring you the list with the best processors today. You will have options from both Intel and AMD, with different prices and performances. This is the most updated definitive list with the best processors on the market, and it has taken us many hours of work, so I hope you like it a lot. But hey, are you already subscribed to the channel? You are supporting the channel a lot and we are on our way to reach 20.000 subscribers in the channel by 2023. If you want to help us achieve this great goal, subscribe and leave your like. To support the hours and hours of work that these videos take, you can follow us on the other networks, like TikTok or Instagram, and above all, add our Amazon and Newegg affiliate links to your bookmarks. Both the Ryzen 7000 and the 13000 Intel are based on x86 architecture, although that is where their similarities end. In terms of other features, the Ryzen and Intel are completely different. For starters, the Zen 4 architecture of the Ryzen 7000 takes the chiplet design introduced by the Ryzen to the next level. The chiplets containing the cores are built at 5 nanometers, while the chiplet with all the control and logic hardware uses TSMC's 6 nanometers. As you can see, we also continue with the 3D models, which use AMD's new 3D cache stacking technology to achieve much higher density. Intel is not far behind either, with a new generation of Raptor Lake processors that reach 10 nanometers, and whose main novelty is the combination of high performance and high efficiency cores. This makes it possible to have super efficient cores that consume very little power, but are perfectly suitable for lighter tasks, such as surfing. In the case of the i9-13900K, we have 8 cores and 16 high performance threads, which will be used for demanding tasks, and 16 cores and 16 high efficiency threads. Those 24 cores that you see that the i9 has are cheated, because in reality they are only 8 high performance cores, half of the high end Ryzen. But hey, you do not quite understand these concepts we are talking about? Would you like to understand what the cache or the CPU cores are for? Don't miss this video, it explains all the keys of a processor. It will help you to understand all this much better. In these new generations we also have processors of lower ranges. Intel continues to use the trick of efficient cores to bulge those numbers, although they are actually matched in terms of number of high performance cores. We are still missing low-end Ryzen 7000 processors, since the AM5 platform is brand new, and they will take longer to come out. They're a cucumber, no doubt about it, but just by showing you the prices, or the strengths of each processor we don't know anything. Let's see how they compare in performance. Which are more powerful, the Ryzen 7000 or the Intel 13000? In video games, which is what we are most interested in, we could say that we are facing a technical tie practically. For example, Andy's 3D range is super top, and outperforms Intel's best, thanks to a huge L3 cache, as explained in this video. These tests can be found on the Tom's Hardware website, which is a reputable medium that has the means to perform such a titanic task. We wish we had the means to do something similar, really. An RTX 4090 graphics card was used on all processors, and DDR5 RAM was used. This average FPS is taken by averaging the entire list of games that have been tested in 1080p, and then the percentage of loss that each CPU has with respect to the best, which is the Ryzen 77800X3D. This configuration is used, because the RTX 4090 in 1080p is very overpowered, and consequently the CPU becomes the bottleneck. If you play at 4K resolutions, which is what the 4090 is designed for, or if you mount a less powerful graphics card, such as an RTX 4070, the differences between CPUs would be reduced. In mid-range processors, if we compare the Ryzen 5 and the latest generation Intel i5, the performance is super even. Intel gives us a significant performance differential between its cheapest model, the i5-13400F and the 13600K, which costs more than 100 euros extra. 
The Ryzen 5s are halfway in price, and also in performance. Again, if we raise resolutions or mount a less powerful graphics card, the performance differences will be greatly reduced. The Ryzen processor has a very good price, as it is very close to the i5-13400, despite yielding an extra 10%. Of course, as I said before, these Ryzen have to go if or if with plate and RAM DDR5, so the price of the complete combo rises more. You can mount the i5 with DDR4 board and RAM, although if you do that, keep in mind that you will also be losing extra performance over the Ryzen CPU. Right now there is a significant price difference, and buying Intel CPU with DDR4 board and RAM would save you about 100 minus 150 euros easily. A detail to take into account, especially if you have a budget of less than 1000 or 1200 euros. This is why I say that, today it is more worthwhile to mount DDR4 RAM, since that saving of 150 euros by buying DDR5 instead of DDR4 can allow you to opt for a higher end graphics which will be giving you much more performance than what you would be providing the DDR5 RAM. We already checked this in this video here. Personally, if you want a durable platform, the Ryzen 57600X option seems to me to be the winner in this range. If you want to save money, I think a processor from the next group might interest you even more. In the lower range, we are presented with the dilemma of having to choose a new processor, such as the i31310F which is the latest generation and has a fantastic performance, but has only 4 cores and 8 threads, or rely on an alternative of previous generation, such as an i51240F or Ryzen 55600X, which despite costing more, perform better, and give you that bonus of having 6 cores and 12 threads. An extra that you will notice, especially in the future, if you want your PC to last a long time. Keep in mind that as these are previous generation processors, in the case of the Ryzen 55600X at least, you could find a somewhat cheaper motherboard, so the price would be equalizing quite a bit. Which processor should you buy, a Ryzen 7000 or an Intel 13000? Well if you have a budget of less than 1000 euros, I would not recommend any of them, because the Intel 12000 or Ryzen 5000 are still great options that will allow you to build a better value for money gaming PC. If you have more than 1000 euros and you want the best processor for gaming without looking at price or possibilities of improvement, Intel gives a little more performance in many games. Ryzen 7000 gives you almost the same performance, but with a much more durable platform and more possibilities for future upgrades. The final decision remains in your hands, consider your priorities, and you will surely not regret it. If this video has helped you and you liked it, remember that your subscription is very important to us. Leave a comment saying which one you would choose between the new Ryzen 7000, Intel 1300 or the previous generation options. We'll be reading all those comments. That said, we'll see you in future videos, see you again, bye.